Hello guys and welcome to another video. We are taking Percy Jackson quizzes, but not just any Percy Jackson quizzes, official readwriteorden.com Percy Jackson quizzes. Today we're finding out what god I descended from, what demigod I am, and finally what book series to take on my next vacation, which is today I'm going to New York, so let's get into it. So the latest of Read Riordan quizzes all have to do with people working and being to college and needing to go on a vacation, which is very, very specific to my life. So let's start and find out, based on my work habits, which god am I descended from? I typically say I might be a daughter of Athena or a war god, and honestly, I don't think I'm gonna get Athena based on my work habits because they have gotten sloppy. <laughs> I have really good work habits for YouTube because I'm really, really passionate about it. So I hyper fixate on it. However, once I'm not passionate, concentrating <laughs> is so hard. So let's find out. I love this gigantic picture of both Athena and Poseidon. They both look truly, truly incredible in that. What is my ideal work environment? None. I think we should all just be happy, be able to do whatever we want with our own lives, have infinite amounts of money and not need to work ever. Unfortunately, that's not the world we live in yet. So let's see. Flexible and remote friendly. That's what I have right now. And it's really nice, except when I notice that I haven't left my house in a week and that I'm slowly, <laughs> slowly descending into madness. Open and transparent. Okay, that's good. Dynamic and fast pace. Collaborative and team oriented. I think the people from where I work have created this quiz. Well organized and efficient. Quiet and focused. I'm gonna say flexible and remote friendly because that's the best way that I can keep doing YouTube. What's your preferred way to deal with a difficult coworker? Luckily, I do work from home, so no difficult coworkers to be seen. Find common ground, ignore them, offer assistance and support. I don't think I'm that big of a person. Practice patience and empathy. I mean, that's what we should do. Consult with a superior, become even more difficult. That's fun. That's what I would do if my coworkers were my siblings. However, they're not unfortunately, so I'm going to go with probably either ignore them or try to find some common ground. So I'm gonna go with ignore them because I'm not feeling particularly mature as of right now. Which of these hobbies is most likely to become your next career? Podcasting. I have thought about podcasting a lot. Obviously, I'm a content creator and I have now started to expand on what content I create. Speaking of shorts, I have also been making a lot more short form content in my Instagram and in my TikTok. So follow me at aka Unclaimed Demigod so you don't miss any of that and exciting things are coming soon there. So you are going to want to be following me. So I think podcasting would be a great next step. I just don't have the life force or energy to just start podcasting, to record, think of ideas, edit and post unpublished. I, it's just too much right now. If someone wants to have me as a host, I could totally do that. Like, call me up. I will be a host in your podcast or like I would be a guest. But just doing it right now just does not fit with my life, though I would really, really like to do that. Let me know down in the comments if you would like to see an unclaimed podcast. Might be coming soon in the future. Who knows? Music, athletics, painting, creating video content. I don't think I would be interested in that, no. Writing, okay. So all of these honestly are things that I would be genuinely interested in doing. But since I have written technically four books, I'm gonna go with writing because that is something that I would want to pursue more in the future. How do you handle a boring job? Now that's the age old question. You just put Spotify on blast. Set goals and challenges, focus on personal growth, commiserate with colleagues, focus on the bigger picture, take regular breaks, quit and find a new job. No, 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 we need the money. So I'm gonna say take regular breaks. Doing things for your mental health is very good and very necessary. So as long as your job is in your whole life, if you have something outside of it to look forward to, that's like the most important thing. And also setting goals and challenges, I would say, would be my next one. Watch me get either Dionysus or Apollo. I'm just uh, as long as I don't get Zeus, I feel like his work ethic is like the worst. Which of these unusual jobs would you choose to pursue a career? Professional puzzle solver. Not, I'm not very good with puzzles. I don't know why I think all that talent like was given to my brother at birth. Professional food taster. I am very good at eating. So maybe, maybe, but I'm not good at like differentiating flavors. Professional sleep consultant. Yes, I'm very good at sleeping. And I have so many dreams. Like I dream every night and I always remember remember them when I wake up and I'm like, whoa, what just happened? And they're not just like a normal dream. They have like 
A plot, B plot, C plot, anything and everything can happen and they're just always so interesting and I wake up like wow, it's like I watch like a 10 hour movie. Well, I don't sleep for 10 hours but you get what I mean. Ice cream flavor developer, <sighs> be good. Professional Lego builder, that's again for my brother. Paranormal investigator, now I think that I would be too scared to do this but I do love myself some ghost files. I'm going to say professional food taster and maybe sleep consultant if it was about dreaming but since it's not i'm gonna go food taster come on how many nuts do we have what's your go-to excuse for calling in sick allergic reaction no i was unfortunately born perfect and i have absolutely no allergies when everyone in my family has at least one allergy each and i do have three siblings and two parents so <laughs> Guess some are just born lucky and some are just lucky to be born. All I'm saying is that I would survive the apocalypse, but I'm not certain my family would. Dental emergency. Ooh, that I have had many issues with my teeth, especially with my retainer. It keeps snapping and poking me. Stomach bug, yeah. Dog ran away. I do have two dogs, so this is very plausible and I might have used my dogs as an excuse once or twice. Food poisoning, you had a bad dream last night. I'm not an idiot and I don't usually have bad dreams unless it's very, very warm in my bed or I'm going on a trip where I have to take a flight or I have an exam. So I'm going to go with dog ran away. Another one. What's your preferred method of communication with coworkers? Email, Slack, Zoom, text, yelling across the office. Well, I would have to yell across the ocean so I don't think that's possible. I'd rather keep to myself. I'm gonna go with email because we don't use the other ones and Zoom seems like a lot of pressure. Like to have my face ready and my voice ready? No, thank you. I'm not wearing any pants, so it wouldn't be appropriate. How do you balance your work and personal life? I don't, I'm, I make YouTube videos, so I clearly don't. Spread out vacation days. Don't check emails after a certain time. Practice self-care. Set clear boundaries. Turn on the key. Turn off notifications on nights and weekends, play games while no one is looking. I'm exposing myself so much right now. Oh, so many to go. How do you deal with a difficult boss? Keep to yourself, just smile and nod. Take initiative and stand up for yourself. Not bloody likely. Vent with coworkers, cry in the bathroom. It is hard to find a job in Spain, so I'm not going to go looking for a new job. I'm just going to go cry in the bathroom. Like hide it inside and then it doesn't. Ah! Well, I guess you mentioned the bathroom and Poseidon just pops up there, right? The more you know. Which of my answers made them think yes? Poseidon, Lord of the Sea and Earthshaker. I don't know and honestly, I don't care. I'm too happy. Good work. Based on your responses, you have been claimed by Poseidon. We all knew it was just a matter of time. Go ahead and make yourself at home in cabin three. Don't mind if I do. Train well. Don't forget to brush your teeth occasionally. Occasionally? And try not to get sent on a quest. They tend to shorten your lifespan. Your activities director, Chiron. Okay, but why? Why though? Like, I'm, I'm happy about it, but they're not going to tell me why. It's weird though. Like, I would assume that Poseidon is more confrontational, right? The Earthshaker, one of the most important gods. Obviously, he always get, has like a civil war going on with Zeus. Like, what is going on? How, I, cause I presented myself as non-confrontational or like um, conflict avoidant and I went to cry in the bathroom. Maybe like the salt from my tears have to do with Poseidon. I don't know. Please let me know down below. If you did this, what result did you get? And did you do you think that mine makes sense? Like based on my answers, Poseidon? Like I'm not complaining. I would get to bunk with Percy if this were true. So obviously I'm not, I'm not complaining. But it's just weird, right? It's weird. Weird, weird. weird. While we're on the topic of Poseidon, real quick, I posted a short a couple of weeks ago. The next person is going to be my roommate. There's probably not gonna be blood related. Sally Jackson, I don't think she's a daughter of Hephaestus. Might be wrong. And now people won't stop saying that I look like Sally Jackson. Look at me in the eye and tell me that I look like this woman. I don't see it. Like it's not a bad comparison. I'm not offended by any means, but I think that you're just is focusing on the fact that we both have brown hair it's about the same length and now it's about the same texture so i'm just <laughs> very confused because i posted that reel and for the first time in my life i've started getting comments about me looking like sally jackson and the show has been out for months and i've been making videos about it for months so the fact that i started getting these messages now from that short i'm like i'm confused is it the fact that i'm wearing blue but let's take things a little bit further back. We've done work, but what comes before work? Well, for a lot of people, 
it's college. So based on my college experience, which demigod am I? Clearly, based on this, I would be Percy or I guess Tyson, you know, a, a child of Poseidon. So let's see my college experience. Now that was a treat. It had its high highs and its low lows. With the perspective of living in 2024, I'm like, wow, that girl had it easy. She didn't know what was coming. Oh, I can't believe I graduated four years ago, I feel. But I think it's a good time to take this test, so let's do it. What was your favorite course in college? History, literature, theater, art, science, math. I went to college in Spain and I studied translation and interpreting. And just so you know, in Spain, we don't do like the things you do like 101 and you have to take a little bit of everything Thing. we don't do that if you decide to study math you are not going to study English you're not gonna study history you are definitely not going to study art so suffice to say I didn't study any of these in college I guess literature and history maybe but in terms of language so I'm gonna say literature because I don't want to lie but it would have been art I would have loved to do art what was on your go-to study playlist in college that's easy nothing because if you Give me music while I'm trying to study. I'm not going to study at all. Especially if the music is in a language that I understand. That's why probably the only music I can study to is Korean music, because I don't understand it. Not to say that Korean is the only language I don't understand, but it's the only language that I listen to music in that I don't understand. So rock, dance, rock, rock, dance, rock, pop, emo, country. I have been listening to country more as I work, so I'm gonna go with country. But uh, not rock, dance, rock, no. What was your go-to late night snack in college? Cereal, ice cream, nachos, ramen noodles, microwave popcorn, pizza rolls. I was gonna go noodles, but then I saw microwave popcorn and I developed an obsession for popcorn, specifically microwave popcorn, just because it's so much easier to make in college. I'm still obsessed with it, but now I've decided that I make my own popcorn. I do like, I, it was microwave popcorn. Like uh, every Friday night, I would just have popcorn for dinner and I would be extremely happy. And I would look forward to that every Friday afternoon. What was your favorite extracurricular group in college? Athletics? No. Volunteer work? Nope. Campus newspaper? Nope. Social justice organization? Didn't have that. Outdoor adventure club or debate club? And none of these existed, except I guess the athletics. Again, I went to college in Spain, so very different. What would have been my favorite out of all of these? I have done athletics in high school, so I'm gonna say that would have been my favorite just because it's the only one I have experience in. What was your favorite college dining hall food? My college had pretty good dining hall food, but I refused to pay for it, so I always just took a sandwich. I remember one day, me and my friends had to stay over during lunch, and uh, instead of bringing a sandwich or like leftovers or something, I took a packet of microwave popcorn and I used one of the many microwaves to make it and everyone was just like what's that popping sound and why does it smell so good all of a sudden so if you're planning on going to college soon or if you are in college life hack just eat popcorn <laughs> just do that i don't see popcorn on here tacos burgers sushi oh, fancy salad stir fry burrito bowl again not foods that you would typically find in a spanish college so out of this I'm going to go with burgers just because that's the most likely to show up in Spain. What was your favorite way to de-stress in college? Well, I would uh, spend hours upon hours watching K-dramas and get no sleep. Hanging out with friends, playing video games, listening to music, reading, napping, playing sports. All these are good options. I'm gonna say hanging out with friends just because that's the most de-stressing one, but obviously reading. What was your favorite off-campus hangout spot in college, coffee shop, beach? I live in Madrid, so no. Bookstore, local park, life venue music, life music venue, or art museum. I'm gonna go with coffee shop because we always hang out at a McDonald's, so that's the closest thing to this. What was your favorite study spot in college? On, uh, I didn't do much studying a lot, but yeah. Your dorm room, study lounge, common room, outdoor area, computer room, library. The only study I got done was in my dorm room, which is my actual room in my house. Take me to a library and I will just space 
out. What was your favorite part about your college town slash city? The sports scene, the public transportation, the cuisine, the nightlife, the historical landmarks, local community events. I'm gonna go with historical landmarks because Madrid is a beautiful city and everyone should just favor it over Barcelona. Uh, I don't know why I'm just thinking about people actually saying Barcelona when they talk about Barcelona and they want you to know that they've been there. So they're like, I can pronounce it Barcelona. Oh, God, no, no. No, God! No, God, please, no, no! Here I was on a pronunciation rant, and uh, Meg McAfee is staring at me. God. <laughs> I feel insulted in some way. This girl, this girl is probably one of my least favorite characters in the Riordan verse. I'm sorry, it's nothing personal. Just, I did not like her from the moment that she first spoke in the books. I was like, ugh, she's so irritating. And how is this 12 year old behaving like this when Percy was so much better in general when he was 12? But let's see why. You're one tough cookie, aren't you? Your green thumb shows how much you care about the world around you. I do not have a green thumb, I say, as there are several plants behind me, but I'm generally not good at keeping them. But we never mistake you for some hippy dippy do gooder. You definitely do good, but you do it in your own no nonsense way. I guess that's true. You return between self-protection and opening up to people, which we totally respect. You know your softer side is most effective in small doses, in between some serious butt kicking. I hate that this is kind of right. I hate it. I guess that this could be true in like a very basic sense, in like a very basic breakdown of my personality. This could be true. I don't think this is true for me back then, four years ago when I was in college, but uh, I don't want to look at her face anymore. So let's move on to quiz number three. I am so offended. And on to quiz number three. Let's dream about my next vacation and find out which Rick Riordan set to pack. Okay, pick a word to describe your ideal vacation. Rejuvenating, eventful, adventurous, challenging, or educational. I'm gonna go with eventful, because my life isn't all that eventful. So I like things to be eventful in vacations, you know. Events in small doses, I love it. And I like to get like my money's worth, so the more things that I can do and that can happen, the better. What would you bring? Family, squad, BFF, significant other, or I'd go solo. Honestly, I love going on vacation with my friends, but there's nothing quite like going with your family, your parents paying for everything. So I'm gonna go with family because that way I don't have to plan anything. The burden is on my parents and I don't have to pay for anything. The burden is once again on my parents. I do love the freedom that comes with going with your besties and you know, the memories made there but I do have to pay for it and I do have to plan it. This is my preferred vacation. I am going full on passenger princess mode. And the best part of this plan is no one can, can stop me. me. What's your ideal weather for the vacation? Warm and sunny, cool and breezy, dry desert tea, no thank you. Hot and humid, no, 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 no. I sweat too much for that. Snow, not really because vacation means pictures to me and I want good outfits and that does not translate to snow. So I'm gonna go either warm and sunny or cool and breezy. Cool is not cold. So I'm gonna go cool and breezy just because I, I love myself a breeze and as I said, I sweat a lot, so not no warm. Pick a location, island, mountain, city, ancient ruin, lake. I've done a lot of mountains and lakes because I went to New Zealand recently and I'm not feeling island, I'm feeling city. I'm feeling like a a nice city that we can explore with a lot of historical landmarks. What will you pack? A bathing suit? I don't think so. I'm going to a city. Whatever's clean, walking shoes, dancing shoes, a first aid kit. A first aid kit, you know it because my feet are going to hurt and I'm going to have blisters from all the walking I'm going to do. What kind of luggage will you pack? A sturdy backpack. There's no time for bags. Duffel bag, carry-on size, checked bag size. Well, are my parents paying? That's the question. But let's assume that it's a one week thing. I don't want it to be a hustle. I don't want to carry a whole suitcase. So I'm gonna go carry on size. I think that's perfect. And it also limits me because I tend to overpack. What's your ideal form of travel? Road trip, on foot, let's rough it. Cruise, oh, no, that's a nightmare. Train trip, honestly, have not done that, but I think I would like it except for the anxiety of having to get to the train on time. A portal, what else? Well, I, one of the, my dream powers would be teleportation because I love to travel and I would love to get to a place as soon as I think about it, but I'm just gonna go with road trip because again, I did that in New Zealand and it was so 
fun. And if it's beautiful scenery, then that's a plus. What will you do on your vacation? Lie on the beach? Again, no, I'm going to a city with landmarks. Live like the locals. That depends on where I'm going and if I know the locals. Sailing, seeing lots of sights. There we go, everything. Uh. <laughs> seeing lots of sights. That's more specific and I like specificity. Pick a suitable destination. California coast? I don't think I would be too interested in California. I'm sorry. It just doesn't seem like the place for me. Athens? Yes. Norway, been there, Atlantis, you know, I haven't really been there. And the pyramids, it seems hot and that it's so sunny, I would get sunburned. I know I live in Madrid, so, but I don't leave my house. So I'm gonna go with Athens. That seems like a very fun destination. It's on my bucket list. How about nightlife? I'd rather go to sleep. Let's see a show. Okay, never mind. If it's Broadway, I will see a show. Dancing all night? No. I only dance in my house. Campfire under the stars, that does sound nice, except if there are bugs. A culinary adventure or party, I'm sorry, show, I'm going with a show. I love musicals and theater just in general, not because the story necessarily, but just seeing all the effort that people put in and just seeing the stage and the way things move, it just is so cool. People who do stage and stage lighting and stage tricks are like the MVP. I love them so much. I went to see Phantom of the Opera this winter and I didn't understand anything they were saying because it's opera and I didn't know the song. So I was like, vocalize more, what are you saying? But the stage was so cool. Like the organ came out of the ground. They teleported at one point. There was a boat through half of the show. So that was a lot of fun. How long would you stay gone? I think a week works really well for when you're going really far. So now I'm going to New York for a week. It's good. And especially if you're staying at someone else's place, you don't overstay your welcome. Two weeks is great for when you go with family to like your summer place, you know? A month, also great with family. Let's get lost, no thank you. A whirlwind weekend. Now that seems like a lot of pressure, especially if you haven't been to that place to see everything you can in three days. So I'm gonna go with a week is fine because I want to do a lot of things, uh, but in a short amount of time. What kind of souvenir would you take home? So when I was younger, I used to collect snow globes from trips and I used to ask everyone to bring me a snow globe when they went on a trip. It got a little out of hand. I had like over 50 snow globes and I couldn't keep that anywhere. So then I decided I wanted something else. And now I have started collecting maps from the cities that I visit. And what I do is I take a pen and I circle every different landmark that we visited and where we stayed and it just seems so special because I remember the place, I remember things we did, and I really like it. Hopefully, I will be able to find one in New York because finding one in Paris was hard. Tattoo? <laughs> Definitely not. A shirt, a statue, an ancient scroll, a refrigerator magnet. Now, shirt seems nice, but I don't typically wear like graphic t-shirts, which is what you would typically buy. So I'm going refrigerator magnet because I do want to grow my own personal collection for when I move out. Ooh! So I was really happy when I got Poseidon and then everything decided to go downhill from there. But that makes sense. So I got the Heroes of Olympus. You're an experienced traveler and you know how to make for a great vacation. You have a to-do list to check off. That's actually unfortunately true and it's going to include some time at sea and in the air i mean i do have to go by plane to new york and that's over the ocean so it, it's true so far possibly at the same time yes actually <laughs> whether it's in europe or utah you're going to have a tattered paper bag of the lost hero under your arm for all of it i'm not going to utah but i am in europe right now so technically this is weirdly correct i don't think i'm going to be taking the heroes of Olympus with me however if you have any kind of serious recommendation let me know down below because I do really like seeing your recommendations and I've recently started reading more of your recommendations I've done Keeper of the Lost Cities all nine and a half books of that I've done the three books in the False Prince trilogy so I am a woman of my word and I like recommendations so leave them down below in case my reaction to the Heroes of Olympus surprised you it really really shouldn't because one of the first videos I made was a video titled everything wrong with the heroes of olympus and then one of the videos that first started getting traction in my channel were the rewriting the heroes of olympus trilogy that i did so i'm not a hater i just take heroes of olympus with a grain of salt like there's a lot of potential and a lot of great things in there but it was just not executed that well and especially after percy jackson and the olympians it does not measure up in my opinion how do you know
No, what's good for me? That's it's my, my opinion. opinion. So I will be leaving the link to those quizzes down below. Let me know in the comments if you have taken them and if you have gotten results that you happen to agree with because now I'm just very confused with my own results. The less specific one was Poseidon and that's the one that I'm most happy about but the other one's like weirdly fit so I don't know what to feel. Please leave a like if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Click that bell button to get notifications every time I post a new video. I post videos just like this every single Friday. Yes, even when I'm traveling to New York and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye!